what's in your coffee and why do I even care? I care because I'm a bariatric surgeon and it turns out that morning coffee is one of the most common causes for weight regain in the long run after bariatric surgery. Now calm down, coffee itself is okay and I'm gonna talk about how we can have coffee in a healthy way because I depend on coffee too, um, but we need to troubleshoot some potential common problems. My name is John Pilcher. I'm a bariatric surgeon, like I mentioned, and I practice in San Antonio. Now, one quick thing about coffee. First of all, right after surgery in the first couple of weeks, I think all bariatric programs prefer their patients not to drink coffee at all because coffee has, uh, among its many effects, is a diuretic. That means it makes you pee extra. And so if you're peeing extra while perhaps you're struggling with your intake of fluids and uh, also while you're having the simultaneous diuretic effect of ketosis, you know, ketosis is the rapid fat burning and ketosis also makes you pee extra, then coffee on top of that can be a problem for your hydration status. Um, at least it's my opinion, and I think most bariatric programs, once you are hydrating well, then coffee is going to be okay. But the concern is, what do you put in your coffee? Because plain coffee is just fine. Plain coffee doesn't have any weight-related effects that we know of, not even weight loss effects, actually. Um, but if we put stuff in our coffee that makes it taste wonderful and makes it taste like a caffeinated milkshake, that's where the problem comes in. Non-dairy creamers like this one are common culprits in the morning coffee leading to morning hunger. Let me explain. The non-dairy is often pitched as being more healthy. But let's look at the ingredient list just for a second and think about how this is going to impact the metabolism for a bariatric surgery patient or anyone suffering from the obesity disease. Okay, here we go. Water, sugar, number two, vegetable oil, etc., and lots of chemicals, which also can stimulate hunger. Another version of this brand has water and um, what is it called? Um, corn syrup solids and then vegetable oil. The corn syrup solids are basically just another form of sugar. And so basically what's happening when you use this or other non-dairy brands of creamer um, that tastes so good, I know they do, but you're using um, this material to actually put sugar into your coffee and sugar into your body. And so then what happens when you drink this liquid form of sugar, which is very easily absorbed and very potent, it causes your blood sugar to spike up and then, um, just like gravity, that blood sugar, once it spikes up, it's going to have to come down and it won't come down gently. It's going to come down to below normal in a crash. And then that happens two or three hours after you have your coffee, maybe one hour. And, um, and when your blood sugar is down, you're going to have a hunger craving. You're going to feel bad and you're going to need food. Not only are you, is your body going to be screaming for food in that moment, but your body's going to be screaming for carbs and sugars because it's got a low sugar and sugar is what it needs. And then because in that moment you're faced with true, serious, intense physical hunger, you're going to get some food. No blame in that. And you're probably going to get some carbs. And then what's going to happen is that with those new carbs, your blood sugar is going to spike up and then fall down and you're going to need some more carbs. And so this turns into a vicious cycle of more carbs and more hunger and more insulin resistance and weight regain over time, all starting with what you put in your coffee. Many of you are mad at me right now and you're saying, well, you, you need the coffee and you don't like black coffee. It's bitter. It's harsh. So what about these other things? What about stevia or honey or Splenda? What about protein drinks or muscle milk or almond milk. Um, let's talk through these various options. Unfortunately, I have kind of a tough message for you regarding all the different sweeteners. It seems to be the case that when someone's had the obesity disease, um, any kind of sweet flavor, whether it be real sugar, honey, or fake, you know, um, NutraSweet, Splenda, um, stevia, Truvia in between, any kind of sweet material is working against your metabolism and in some way it's likely to promote weight regain. And so as this applies to your coffee, people feel like they need a sweet coffee. Um, I will tell you that for all these different substances, there is a dose relationship and so zero is best. But if you can get your coffee down to the essence of sweetness rather than overwhelming sweetness and milkshake, you're going to be doing yourself a favor and have less midday hunger, less cravings, and less overall food intake. 
As far as the other creamy things, um, I'll mention almond milk first. I think almond milk, precisely almond milk, plain almond milk is probably okay. I'm not sure it adds that much to coffee, but you can try it out. I would just say that if you're trying almond milk, I would want you to look very carefully at the label and make sure there's no extras in there, no chemicals, no sweeteners, and these kinds of things. And I think most often there are. Um, muscle milk is a form of protein drink, which I'm gonna talk about next. And, and so what about protein drinks? I mean, isn't that a perfect solution? Because then you're getting your coffee that you want, you're getting your caffeine, and you're getting nutrition as well, right? And I'm just, I, I'm not a big fan of protein drinks in general, and I'm not a big fan of protein drinks in coffee for a couple of reasons. I think that uh, the big things are that it's the artificial materials that are in the protein drinks. And these are even high quality protein drinks. They have artificial sweeteners, they have preservatives. And as I mentioned just a moment ago, those things tend to stimulate hunger. Um, protein drinks often bring with them also the idea that I'm supposed to eat on a certain schedule. And as I've mentioned in other settings, I think the right thing for a person to do is notice if they feel hungry. And if they feel hunger, and it's a physical, sensible hunger, then to eat some healthy food, eat some natural food. And I like that better than protein drinks for you. So I think that putting protein drinks in your coffee is a form of eating when you don't need to eat. And that extra protein isn't really extra healthy. It's just extra calories. Back to the coffee. What can we do with the coffee? It does seem to be the case that natural fats and dairy fats are okay as a way to soften your coffee. I'm not going to lie and tell you that it sweetens your coffee. It really doesn't. But if you use half a heavy whipping cream, then your coffee will be uh, more mellow. It will take away the acidic bite of the coffee. And I think you'll find, try out this process, I think you'll find that it makes it very enjoyable. Um, on the theme of natural fats, some people like butter in their coffee, and I think metabolically that's probably okay. I personally don't find it very good, but it's something you might want to try out. The other reason the coffee conversation is so important for your health and your weight is that coffee intake happens at the beginning of the day. And it's my experience talking to patients that your intake at the beginning of the day sets the tone for your metabolism and your hunger through the course of the day. And so not just the coffee, but breakfast, if you eat breakfast, needs to be high quality natural food. That means low carb and low chemical. And if you go with natural high quality food, if you're hungry because you're not obligated to eat breakfast, but if you go with high quality natural food, then you're likely to have a hunger through the course of the day that is moderate and easily satisfied. You're likely to have a stable blood sugar and a nice energy level through the course of the day. So just winding up, I wanna tell you that yes, coffee is okay and the key thing is what you put into it. It needs to be quality. Make good choices and be healthy.